Amen. Isn't it wonderful to come to worship and to hear a word of Scripture that really speaks to you? I mean, you hear this story that Jesus tells and you think, oh, it is good to be wheat. You know, it's wonderful to just be, you know, waving in the sun and filled with all that goodness, that weediness that we are. <laughs> oh, because the world is full of weeds. It's a temptation, isn't it? To hear this reading and to right away put yourself in the category of the wheat and feel pretty, pretty self-righteous about that. And if we're honest, maybe we even go a little further to want to mention or point out who we think the weeds are around us. Now maybe you've heard it said that when you point a finger, remember, there are three fingers pointing back at you. In fact, Jesus used this same good judgment when it came to his teaching last week. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, don't be so quick to take that speck of dust out of your brother's eye or to point that speck of dust out in your brother's eye when you haven't taken a good look at the log in your own. Sometimes it would do us well to hold a mirror to our own behavior before accusing someone of behavior we are also guilty of. So Jesus gives us today this parable of the wheat and the weeds, a parable that reminds us that we can't choose our neighbors and that wheat and weeds grow up alongside one another. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there was some action taken right away so those weeds could just help that wheat to flourish, just be plucked away? But in the parable, Jesus uses caution there, for it could be that in the plucking away of the weeds, some good wheat is taken as well. So let it be, Jesus says. Let that continue to grow side by side. You don't have to be much of a gardener to know that weeds are troublesome. You want to get rid of them, and you work very hard to get them out of your beautiful flower garden uh, or your uh, vegetable garden, and it seems as soon as you pull one, another one appears. Ah, those weeds. Well, it's hard for us to imagine as we have a blanket of snow covering the ground right now, but we hold on to hope that spring will be here soon. Every day we're a step closer to warmer air, to green, lush lawns. And with that comes lovely flowers of spring. And usually the first flower that pops out of the grass is the lovely dandelion. Yes, the dandelion is quite lovely when it first appears with its beautiful yellow crown. Uh, but for many people, the dandelion is not a wanted uh, particular flower in their yard. I have a very, very, very close friend. We'll call her Jan Lynette. And Jan Lynette uh, is not much of a, a stickler when it comes to her yard. Uh, Jan Lynette is certainly willing to mow and keep her yard looking in good order, but in terms of competing with the Joneses, Jan Lynette really doesn't care that much. In fact, um, you know, dandelions here or there, no big deal. Jan Lynette doesn't spend a great deal of money on a lawn care service. Jan Lynette rarely fertilizes the lawn, um, but, you know, kind of keeps it up. It's, it's fine. Well, Jan Lynette was pretty okay with this until... Jan Lynette's daughter was graduating from high school and they were going to host a party, an open house at their home. It just so happened that the week before the party, Jan Lynette looked out her back window and discovered her entire backyard was filled with dandelions. A blanket of yellow, really quite lovely. Until a couple of days later, that loveliness turned into gray, withered stems that looked like the entire yard had been infested with snakes. Now, Jan Lynette's party for her daughter was coming up in just a few days. So with somewhat uh, sanity, I guess, Jan Lynette um, decided she would take matters into her own hands. And with a bucket and a scissors, Jan Lynette planted herself in the yard and clipped off every single one of those dandelions in the yard, putting them in the bucket 
and throwing them away. Now you may think, what is wrong with Jan Lynette? <laughs> Why would she spend two days in her yard, people walking by, waving at her <laughs> as she's clipping away all of these dandelions? Because nobody wants to see your weeds. <laughs> because nobody wants to have weeds that are seen. Because weeds grow up whether we want them or not, and they appear alongside of us. Sometimes we want to take efforts to get rid of them, and sometimes they just keep growing. Sometimes we have control over them, and sometimes we just don't. We've lost all control. Maybe you have not sat in a yard clipping off dandelions, but perhaps you have gone to some great effort to let the weedy part of yourself be covered up or tucked away because you don't want others to see it. Maybe in some ways you have spent a great amount of energy covering up that weedy part of your life because you'd like to appear, at least for a little while, maybe even just for a party, like you have everything all together and perfect. Jesus tells us this parable of the wheat and the weeds to show the extremes to which sometimes we find ourselves when it comes to good and evil. And that good and evil, just like weediness in our lives, will always be in tension. And that good and evil, those two categories are so distant that we are so quick to want to put others in one category or another. How we look at our world today, our politics today, and see that kind of division. How quickly we want to point fingers at one or the other as good or evil. So what do we do with this reality check, this story that Jesus gives to us? Well, the disciples wanted to know as well. And so they asked Jesus, tell us, Jesus, they said, uh, what is the meaning? Explain to us the parable of the weeds. Now, Jesus must have shook his head and thought, there it is, right there. It's not the parable of the weeds. It's the parable of the wheat and the weeds. See, you already put yourself in the category of the weeds, disciples. Because you see, when it comes to deciding who's in and who's out, who are weeds and who are wheat, that is not for you to decide, Jesus says. That decision will come at the end of the age with my angels returning and and there will be judgment, but that is not for you to judge. That is for God to determine. So instead of spending your energy on finding out who are the weeds or pointing them out, why Jesus gives them an alternative. Jesus says, remember the mustard seed? Remember the story I just told you about yeast? That little mustard seed left to itself won't do a whole lot but planted in the ground and nurtured and allowed to grow, why, it becomes a great, great tree providing shelter for the birds of the air. And that, that little bit of yeast with some flour and water and warmth, why, that can create a loaf of bread that can feed many. If you have ears, listen, Jesus says, this is where you can focus your energy. For you have been given this little seed of faith this little possibility, this yeast that can have the potential to feed and to nourish others. Perhaps listening to that truth rather than all the energy on judgment might serve the kingdom better because, in fact, God doesn't give up on wheat and God doesn't give up on weeds either. The state of Minnesota this past spring actually announced a program and funding that would encourage residents of Minnesota, homeowners, to let their lawns go to the bees. Did you hear about this? It's a program where homeowners can actually be uh, funded to plant wildflowers and various grasses in their lawn so that the bees have opportunity to pollinate more in natural habitat. Now, it's a wonderful idea to actually pay someone to put dandelions in their lawn. 
The idea is that there are 50 species of bees that have found it difficult to pollinate when we have such pristine lawns that have no more flowers or naturally growing flowers in them. So that this species of 350 that we host in Minnesota might flourish as well. The University of Minnesota calls it their bee lab, and they've done great research on this with the effort to, again, increase that population. I wonder if the University of Minnesota had some sort of a satellite camera on a lady in her yard in northwest Rochester plucking away dandelions. <laughs> and I wonder if they thought, oh, that poor lady, if only she would just let them grow. They would do such good for the bees. Perhaps Jesus tells us this parable today of the wheat and the weeds to have us step back for a moment in our relationships and to consider the places where we have been quick to judge or point fingers, to recognize that we oftentimes want to put one another in categories of good and evil. And Jesus gives us a different way to live, to recognize our shared soil, to be about growth to be about thriving side by side, being open to the opportunity to grow together. Because perhaps it is that weeds will have a purpose too. And as it may be, God doesn't give up on weeds and God doesn't give up on wheat. God doesn't give up on any of us. And in fact, it, it appears that dandelions serve a purpose to. Amen.